Are you tired of watching your electricity bill go up and up and up? Have you ever felt completely helpless during a power outage? What if I told you that in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to take control of your power and build your very own 4.4 kilowatt hybrid solar system. Even if you're a total beginner, we're talking panels, inverters, batteries, and every single wire in between. This isn't just a tutorial, it's your blueprint to energy independence. So stick around because your journey to a more secure and affordable power source starts right now. Part 1. Component Selection and Sizing Number 1. Solar Panels First up, the heart of our system, the solar panels. We've chosen 8 550 watt bifacial panels. These are not your average panels. They capture sunlight from both the front and the back. But here's a pro tip. The numbers on the datasheet can be misleading. STC rating, standard test conditions. This is the rating in a lab at 25 degrees Celsius. That's 550 watts with an open circuit voltage. V aux of 50.53 volts and short circuit current ISC of 13.84 amps. NMOT rating, real world conditions. This is the more realistic rating for our hot Jamaican climate with a cell temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. The power drops to 411 watts and the voltage, VOC, to 47.53 volts. The key takeaway? Always size your system using the NMOT numbers, not the STC. The heat in Jamaica is no joke and it will reduce your panel's output. So you need to plan accordingly. Number 2 Inverter Next, the brain of our operation, the 10 kW SPI series hybrid inverter. This beast of a machine is what allows us to combine power from the sun, the grid, and our batteries. Let's look at the specs that matter most for us, dual MPPT trackers. This inverter has two separate inputs for our solar panels, which is a big plus. Each can handle up to 5.5 kW of power. Our total of 4.4 kW fits perfectly. PV input, the maximum open circuit voltage is 500 volts and the max short circuit current is 22 amps per tracker. We'll use these numbers to make sure our panel strings are safe. Battery compatibility, it's designed for a 48 volt battery system with a maximum charge discharge current of 200 amps. This matches our battery perfectly. Grid input, this inverter can handle Jamaica standard 90 to 140 volts and 50 slash 60 hertz grid frequency. So it's a perfect match. Number three, battery bank. What's a hybrid system without backup power? We are using a 16 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery with a 51.2 volt nominal voltage. Here's why it's the right choice. Nominal energy, 16 kilowatt hours. This is a huge amount of storage. We use about 8.81 kilowatt hours per day. So this battery can power our home for almost two full days without any sun. Voltage range, it operates between 41.6 volts discharge cutoff and 58.4 volts charge voltage, which is well within our inverter's limits. Max current, it can handle up to 200 amps for charging and discharging, which aligns perfectly with our inverter's capabilities. This means we can pull a lot of power from it for things like air conditioning. Part 2 String Sizing and DC Combiner Box DCDB Number 1 String Configuration Time to get technical. We have 8 panels and 2 MPPT trackers on our inverter. The most efficient way to wire this is with 2 strings of 4 panels each. This gives us 2 independent arrays, each connected to its own tracker. Voltage Check For each string, the open circuit voltage VOC is 4 times 50.53 volts equals 202.12 volts. This is well within our inverter's 500 volt limit. Even in a cold morning, when voltage is higher, we are still safely below the limit. Current check. The short circuit current ISC for each string is 13.84 amps. The inverter's max input is 22 amps per tracker, so we are good to go. This setup is perfect. It ensures our system operates at peak efficiency and avoids overloading the inverter. Number 2. DCDB Components and Calculations The DC Combiner Box is our safety hub for the solar panels. Let's build it out. DC Isolator per String These are manual switches to safely disconnect power from each string for maintenance. We need a 1000 volt DC, 20 amp rating to handle our string's voltage and current. DC fuse slash MCB per string. 
This protects against overcurrent. We size it to 1.25 times ISC. That's 1.25 times 13.84A equals 17.3A. So, a 20A DC fuse or MCB is perfect. DC SPD, surge protector. This is crucial for Jamaica's weather. It protects our system from lightning strikes. We need a 1000 volt DC, 20 kA rated SPD, connected to a proper ground. All these components are housed in one box, creating a single safe connection point for our inverter. Part 3. AC Distribution Board ACDB ACDB Components and Calculations This is the control panel for your home's power. Here's what goes in it. Main AC Isolator This is our master switch. AC MCBs for loads. Lighting. Use a 10 amp MCB. Sockets. A 16 amp MCB will cover most of your outlets. AC unit. A dedicated 20 ampere miniature circuit breaker for the heaviest appliance. AC SPD. A type 2 275 volts 40 kilamperes SPD wired to the main input will protect against surges from the grid. Under over voltage relay, since Jamaica's grid voltage can fluctuate, this is vital. We'll set it to disconnect if the voltage goes outside a safe range like 180 to 260 volts to protect our appliances. MCB for inverter, output. Our inverter's max power is 10,000 watts. 10,000 watts divided by 240 volts equals 41.67 amps. So, a 50 amp MCB provides a nice safety margin. MCB for grid input. Our grid bypass is 63A, so we'll use a 63A MCB to protect the line from the grid. ATS switch, extra safety. This is our final piece of safety equipment, the automatic transfer switch, ATS. It's a lifesaver. Wiring. The grid and inverter both connect as separate inputs to the ATS. The ATS's single output then feeds the ACDB. Function. When the grid goes down, the ATS automatically and instantly switches to the inverter's power. You won't even notice the lights flicker. When the grid comes back on, it switches back and starts charging your battery. It's seamless. Part 4. Battery Bank Protection DC MCB for battery Never ever connect a battery without a breaker. This is your first line of defense against a short circuit. Sizing our battery's max discharge is 200 amps. We always add a 20% safety margin, so we'll install a 250 amp DC MCB. Wiring. The positive plus cable from the battery goes to the input of this breaker, and the output goes directly to the inverter. Part 5. Wiring connections. Let's connect it all. DC side connection PV wires. Use 10 AWG PV wire. It's UV resistant and designed for this. PV both string connect independently series. DCDB wiring, follow the diagram, string 1 goes to isolator 1, then to its 20 amp fuse, and finally to the bus bar. Repeat for string 2. The bus bar then goes to the DC SPD and the common output. DCDB to inverter. From the DCDB's output, run your cables to the MPPT1 and MPPT2 terminals on the inverter. Double check your polarity. AC side connection. Now for the AC side, inverter to ACDB. The inverter's AC output connects to the 50 amp MCB in your ACDB. Grid to ACDB. The power from your JPS meter connects to the 63 amp MCB in the ACDB. ATS wiring. Connect the output of the inverter's MCB to the inverter input on the ATS. Connect the output of the grid's MCB to the grid input on the ATS. Finally, the ATS's output connects to the main input of your home's ACDB. Battery to inverter connection. These connections handle a lot of current. Use very thick, high-quality 20AWG cables. Connect the battery's positive terminal to your 250-amp DCMCB with a short cable. From the breaker's output, run the red cable to the inverter's positive plus battery terminal. Run the black cable directly from the battery's negative terminal to the inverter's negative negative terminal. Make sure all connections are tight. Part 6. Grounding Dirt Earthing System this is the most critical safety step. A proper grounding system channels tree electricity away from your equipment and home. DC side grounding. Connect the frames of all solar panels to each other with 6 AWG bare copper wire. Then run this wire to a dedicated ground rod. 
Also connect the grounding terminal on your DC combiner box and the inverter to the same ground rod. AC side grounding. Connect the grounding bar in your ACDB to a separate ground rod. The inverter chassis should also be connected to this AC ground. Ground rod specs. Use an 8-foot copper clad ground rod driven deep into the soil. We recommend checking the resistance with a professional to ensure it's below 25 ohms. Part 7. Final checks and commissioning. Before you flip the switch, a few crucial checks. Pre-power checks. Use a multimeter to confirm the voltage from your strings is below 500 volts. Double check all wiring for correct polarity. Inverter settings. Follow the user manual to configure the battery type voltage limits and grid settings. Test run. Start by turning on the battery breaker first, then one solar string at a time. Watch the inverter screen to see the system come to life. You'll see the battery start charging and the panel sending power. There you have it, a fully functional hybrid solar power system. Your home is now powered by the sun. This system can generate roughly 18 kilowatt hours per day, more than double our daily need of 8.81 kilowatt hours. The excess power will be stored in your battery for nights and cloudy days. And with the ATS, you're always protected. Remember, panels, 8 times 550 watts, 4.4 kilowatts STC. Battery, 16 kilowatt hours lithium iron phosphate. Protection, fuses, SPDs, MCBs, and ATS. Safety, grounding is non-negotiable. Stay safe and enjoy your newfound energy independence. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more solar tutorials, and check the description below for links to our detailed wiring diagrams and component list. Thanks for watching and see you next time.